Hi, welcome to Divine Transmissions. I'm your host, Lisa Marie Shakti Ma. In this episode, we're going to be talking about authentic expression. What is it and how to do it? And I really plan to kind of throw in some, some different perspectives here <laughs> because we use this term a lot, but I want to kind of bring in some other, some other ideas and some other things for you to think about. So I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for joining me. If you are watching or listening to this live, feel free to call in, or if you're watching it live, you can also join in on the chat. I absolutely adore um, interaction with you guys. So please feel free to comment, ask questions, whatever, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> All right, so authentic expression talk about a serious topic right now, right? This is definitely a part of something that I think everyone is, is experiencing. And so really understanding the difference between authentic expression and other forms of expression, and then understanding how do you tap into your authentic expression? So I'd like to first start off with, you know, when we're raised with children, as children, we, we get a lot of suppression with regards to our expression. And actually, even here, I want to back up a little bit more because what is expression? We all think of expression as our voice, right? But even the word voice doesn't have to mean verbal expression. Your voice can be a variety of different things. And so I like to really bring in with the understanding that expression is any form in which you are carrying yourself. So that is what you're saying, that is what you're doing, that is how you're acting, that is how you're actually creating your life, your expression within your reality. It's not just verbal. And it's interesting because as humans, we become very narrowed in, very tuned in to just verbal expression. And unfortunately, that's not where a lot of our authenticity lies. Because as children, right from the get-go, we're told what to say. We're told what's polite and what's impolite to say. And even in our actions, right? We're told what actions are polite and what actions are impolite, what actions are appropriate and what actions are inappropriate. So we're born with authentic expression. And then very shortly after that, we begin to move out of that space, move out of authentic expression into the expression of society, the expression that will make others comfortable, basically. And depending on your own personal childhood, depending on your work, depending on if you're male or female, also depends on how much further you have yourself suppressed your authentic expression. But I think we can safely say that all of us have been in circumstances where we have bit our tongue, so to speak, or we haven't said something because we're worried about hurting somebody's feelings or we're worried about what somebody's going to think of us. Or we just don't feel like saying anything. <laughs> this isn't necessarily an authentic expression. And this is kind of what I want to clear up today because there's several different types of expression. I haven't come up with a label for this one, but the main expression is, well, we can call it politically correct, right? Politically correct expression. I think most people are very familiar with this type of expression. Using all the right words, saying all the right things, tiptoeing around basically so that you don't offend anybody. If you can tell <laughs> by the way that I talk about this, I personally am not a fan of being politically correct. <laughs> 
because I don't feel like it's authentic at all. And I'll get to why I really, the root of this, but basically being politically correct is, it's like walking on ice. It's tiptoeing around maybe what you really want to say so you don't offend anybody. But it's not really authentic in that means because we can authentically, from a space of integrity, what I call inner integrity, just from a space of love and acceptance of all that is, naturally not wanting to offend anybody. That doesn't mean that we won't offend people because some people are just very, very sensitive. But that, as long as we are moving from that space of authenticity, of integrity within ourselves, as long as our intention is not to offend anybody, to hurt anybody, our intention is to accept and love everybody, we've taken care of our side of the responsibility. Our side of the responsibility being that, being that integrity and in that alignment. And then if what we say happens to offend somebody, that's really on them at that point. And that's why I don't personally like politically correct expression because it's hiding behind so many things. And basically what it does is it's emphasizing words. It's putting all the emphasis on words. You know, with animals, a lot of animals learn our language, right? Like dogs understand sit, come, stay, all of those words. But all animals are reading us on much deeper levels than the words that are coming out of our mouth. They are reading our energy. They are reading our intention. They are reading the pictures in our mind. And as humans, we've lost those skills. Instead of feeling into what is the person who's speaking to me, what is their intention? Where are they coming from? It's all about the words that are coming out of their mouth. And that's not authentic expression. The other thing that is not authentic expression is when somebody has been triggered. So let's say that somebody said something that I took personally and I became triggered and then I respond. In that moment of trigger, the energy that is present is actually not the energy of presence. The energy that is present is actually from the wound in which that trigger is poking at. So if they said something that subconsciously triggered an emotion in me from when I was four years old, I will be in the energy of that space. I will be reacting, especially if I'm not aware of what I'm doing, reacting from that pain point. I will be speaking and reacting from that point. So that's more of like traumatic expression or almost like a PTSD, even though obviously that's a very large label, but it is very similar. It can also be called the shock pool. So you're expressing from a space of trauma, from a, a space of unhealed wound. It's not really authentic either. And this is the difference that I like to make because a lot of people think that to speak their mind is authentic expression. And while we can definitely call it authentic expression, and I personally like to use words all over the place, interchangeably, mix them up. <laughs> to bring in different perspectives of a label. Because as soon as we start really labeling something, we narrow it down into one little thing, just like the political correct. And this is only what it means and we can't ever use it outside that context. Language itself is extremely limiting. If you yourself tap into any of the subtle energies, you will find that most of the time you simply cannot describe what you are seeing or experiencing. Words, pale in comparison to the energy that you're experiencing. So language is already very, very limiting. So I like to throw it around a little bit. So let's go back to speaking one's mind. And I wanna really emphasize that right there, speaking one's mind. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
And I would say that oftentimes speaking one's mind is in that space of that traumatic expression. Because when you're in the mind, you're not in your authentic self. And that's the whole point of my dialogue here is that true authentic expression is expression from your authentic self. So I'll get to that point. But first I wanna really point out what it's not. So this speaking from the mind. I would say also that that's the majority of what we see going on right now. And you can totally tap into what I'm saying here because you'll see somebody like say something and then somebody just responds as if they didn't hear what the person was saying. They're just responding. So that's speaking one's mind in the context of either just simply wanting to argue because they have some sort of distortion within their ego, distortion within their I am, that needs to defend themselves. And that comes from a distorted ego. I need to defend myself. So no matter what comes at me, I'm going to argue against it. I'm gonna defend myself. So that is speaking one's mind. Or you can see right now how also what's happening of speaking one's mind or traumatic expression, where somebody says something and somebody gets offended and they're reacting from that space of trauma. It's also still a space of the mind. It's not a space of the authentic self. It's not a space of alignment. It's not a space of the heart. Your mind is what is tuned in to memory and to those traumas. And your mind is the one that will continue subconsciously to cycle you through those experiences. When you are anchored into the heart space, when you are grounded within yourself, you can see what the mind is doing. You can see how the mind wants to say this or the mind wants to say that. You can even see or feel or understand or know where it's all coming from. You can even trace it back to the specific period of your life or the belief that you carry that is currently being expressed from. So you can see how often this is really occurring and probably within yourself too. So what is authentic expression? I'm gonna bring in one more term <laughs> and that's vulnerable expression because vulnerable expression is kind of like our gateway into authentic expression. Vulnerable expression is when you really say how you feel but it's not necessarily from the mind, it's sinking down into the energy of the moment. And it's opening yourself up, vulnerability, right? It's opening yourself up and kind of exposing what all is going on. Maybe you're expressing how you feel and the thoughts that are going into your, coming from your head and then how that all correlates to a trauma in the past. Vulnerable expression is super, super powerful. I had a lot of my biggest healing moments through what I call vulnerable expression where I had somebody in my life who in that moment could hold the space for when something was said and I became triggered, I could vulnerably express and step into that shock pool, step into that trauma and just bring out all of that pain, emotional pain and express all of it. And some people would call that authentic expression. And I 
don't want to not disagree with that. I just want to take it a little step further, a little bit more clarity. So if that to you is considered authentic expression, by all means, and I definitely agree to that in some extent, extent that vulnerable space where you are just truly expressing what you feel, what you think. But again, what I like to bring in is that there's a difference between vulnerable expression when you're in trauma, when you're being triggered, and vulnerable expression into authentic expression where you are grounded and rooted in the self. And I'm gonna play with these two a little bit during this conversation. So you can start to see in yourself because I think speaking from the mind and political correctness, I think that's all very blatantly obvious. But nobody talks about this subtle difference between the vulnerable expression and the authentic expressions. This is where I really want to focus on today. Bring a little bit more clarity so that you can then kind of sit back in your life with this new awareness and begin to see where am I in right now? What kind of expression am I in? And I want to say, I always personally do this with a lot of joy and a lot of fun. Like I play it like it's a game, kind of with myself or against myself. Though it's not truly against myself, but you're here to improve, to grow, to expand. You don't need to take it so seriously. And when it's about yourself, like I love to laugh at myself because it brings in the joy and the fun of it. It brings in the childlike essence that this life is supposed to be. So we're here to have fun. We're here to create. And yeah, part of that is like seeing our shit, you know, really seeing it and then changing ourselves through that awareness. But it doesn't mean it has to be so serious. You can have fun doing it. You can laugh. I always giggle because it's like, <laughs> there I am. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and to be honest, it's not even you in some ways, right? It's your trauma traumatized self. It's not your authentic self. So that's always one good way that you can see it. You can kind of see it as aspects of yourself. Like the you that got hurt or the you that, you know, wants validation or the, the you that, you know, seeks attention, whatever it is. But it's always from a space of love and acceptance of self. You're never really laughing at yourself. You're just lightheartedly giggling bringing in some joy. Okay. So to reach true authentic expression, you have to go through a level of the vulnerable expression. And I don't necessarily mean you need to get on a stage and like open yourself up to the world. You can do it actually just with yourself or like I had, if you have somebody in your life, this is one of the most powerful places. If you have somebody in your life who can really hold space for you, meaning in the moment, they can allow you to express whatever you need to express and they're not taking it personal. They're just loving and accepting whatever you're going through in the moment. If you have somebody like that, be very, very grateful because it's a very, very beautiful connection. And what can be created in that space is magic. So how do we get to this authentic expression and, and what is it really? So the authentic expression is expressing from our heart space. It's expressing from our authentic self, our true self the aligned self, the self that existed before you started having trauma, pain, limiting beliefs, before life happened. Like I said, when you first came into this world, you were authentically expressing even before you could speak. You were just you, you were vibrating 
at the true you. So can you believe that authentic expression is literally a vibration? And then that vibration comes through you in your voice, in your actions, in your radiance, in your life. The true you expresses and always through you. That's authentic expression. And you find that when you're truly authentically expressing and you try to go into a circumstance that isn't authentic or say something that isn't authentic or do something that isn't authentic, that it really doesn't feel good. You're like, whoa, yeah, I, I just can't. Maybe you were going to go do something and you're like, wow, no, I, I just can't. That doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't resonate is a term that we often use, but it goes deeper than that. That's where your authentic expression doesn't want to express in that manner for whatever that is. And it's a really, really beautiful space because when you get really tuned into this, you get to flow within your own vibration. You have a unique vibration, a frequency that is completely and utterly yours. And this frequency is unique to you, like a thumbprint, like a fingerprint. There's no other one out there. And so when you start to clarify and purify yourself and align yourself, this vibration comes out more and more clearly. I often use um, the analogy of like lenses, colored lenses, right? So if you imagine the reverse, I've talked before about information coming through the lens, it also goes out, right? You are information because you are light. Light is information. So your information through your frequency, your personal unique frequency radiates out of you. But when you have beliefs about yourself and, and your chakras are distorted and your ego is distorted, all of your filter, your lens that your frequency is emanating through is kind of like clogged or has other things on top of it. So your authentic expression doesn't come through exactly as it is. It comes through based on the beliefs that you've taken on, based on the perspectives that you've taken on. And then your authentic expression is expressed through those. So the more clear you become in yourself, it's like, you know, you're washing your windows of your being. <laughs> It reminds me of Karate Kid. <laughs> Wax on, wax off. <laughs> I actually really like that analogy. <laughs> so you're waxing on, waxing off all of these filters so that you can truly authentically express so that your unique frequency can vibrate out of you clearly. And it feels so good when you do this because it's you. All of a sudden, your life, your reality is you. You, the real you. Not the you that you took on, that people said you needed to be. Not the you that you think you are. The actual frequency of you. Because as I've said before, we're none of the labels. Anything that you can label yourself as, you're more than that. You're before that. You're beyond that. You're not that. You can use it as an expression, but it does not identify you. It does not define you. You are not definable. You are a vibration. 
vibrations can't be defined as soon as they are, once again, our narrowing language will only limit its vast beauty. So as you connect to this and you start to really authentically express your whole world reflects you and you feel at home and you feel at peace because it's you. You feel in love. You feel validated and accepted and seen because you are, because you are expressing authentically. So there's a lot of value there, tremendous amount of value. for authentic expression. So again, how do we get here? How do we get there? How do we get to authentic expression? So if you have this availability to be vulnerable, that can really lead into authentic expression. So we don't even know what authentic expression is. If you have been expressing from the mind, what you think you need to say, what you've been taught, theories, understandings, analysis, what's politically correct, or of course you've been expressing from trauma, you don't even know what, what your authentic expression is. So you have to get there. And you get there by kind of like feeling out for yourself. <laughs> and I'm gonna give you guys some more specific tools, but it is a process, it is a journey. It's a journey back to self. So through vulnerable expression, you can begin to feel. This is why I love this space so much. I talk about this a lot with my students. Because in the space of vulnerable expression, just really allowing yourself in a moment to express whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, whatever is present for you, regardless of whether it's actually valid or not. What do I mean by that? I mean that maybe you're sitting in a space and with friends and everybody's having a good time and all of a sudden you don't feel very good. You feel angry or you feel anxious or, or you just something else doesn't seem valid, right? Like everybody's having a good time. Why do I feel this way? And normally we would just suppress it. And we'd be like, nope, I just need to ignore that because everybody else is having a good time. I have no reason to feel this way. So we, we think it's not valid, but you could have been triggered. Somebody could have said something, you may have seen something, an energy that you didn't even know was there could have triggered something in you. So if you're in that space of vulnerable expression, you can be like, wow, guys, I don't understand this. This isn't valid. I don't understand why I feel this way, but I'm feeling really angry or I'm feeling really anxious or I don't wanna be here. And that's that space of just expressing right then and there what you're feeling. And the beauty of that is, is it can really open up those traumas, those wounds. And again, if you're around these people that can support you, they'd be like, sweet, okay. And they might come over, whatever they're gonna do to support you and help you to continue to maybe explore that, that feeling or maybe just sit there and hold space for you, love you as you feel all that you're feeling and express it, right, through your vibration because you may not be verbal with it. But if you're angry, you can't tell me that you don't feel when somebody's angry. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things, right? When somebody is like really angry and you're like, what's wrong with that? I'm nothing, I'm fine. <laughs> you're like, well, actually you're not. <laughs> it's so obvious that you're not. And this is what I'm saying where we put so much emphasis on words, right? But the energy is so, they're so clearly upset or they're so clearly angry. That's expression. 
So maybe you would just even sit there and you just express that anger. You just feel anger. And through that process of being loved and accepted <clears throat> within that space, that energy gets to come out and be seen and is allowed to heal. That's the beauty of vulnerable expression. And that's why it's everywhere right now. And it's often, like I said, called authentic expression right now, but I wanna take it a step further. So right now, when most people are saying authentic expression, that's what they're meaning. They're meaning to be vulnerable and just say whatever you're feeling or experiencing in the moment. But it's important to understand when you are feeling or experiencing something that is from a belief or a trauma or something that you've taken on. Because it's very validating to in that moment where you're like, why do I feel like this? I just want to have fun and, and I'm angry or I'm sad. And then if you can be like, oh, this is just, I'm just triggered. I'm just, this is just trauma. Great. Then it opens up that space for you just to be exactly as you are so that you can then get through it. Instead of thinking that you need to be a different way and that that's not valid right now, but it really opens up your awareness of when you are in that energy. And this is where it is really, really special guys because that's where all of our healing can happen. As you start to become really aware of yourself, massive healing starts to take place. So when you can feel when, oh, I wanna say something or I wanna express or I wanna, maybe you wanna punch something or you wanna run away. And you can sense that this all has something to do with some, you don't have to even know what the belief is, the belief or the trauma or whatever. You can take that moment and fully validate it, fully love it, fully allow it. And then through that can be the healing. But you can know that while in that moment, that is what you are feeling. That's not your authentic self. And this is why I'm bringing this in. Because I had a lot of things to do with anger when I was younger and even into my early adult life. And every time I would feel anger, I'd be like, I would be hard on myself. So I didn't want to be angry. Like, why am I like this? Why do I have to do this? Why am I feeling angry? If I would have known in that time, which I eventually did, that that wasn't really authentic expression. It wasn't my authentic self. I'm not an angry person. Not to say that anger doesn't come in my field, but I'm not an angry person. I would have had a lot more compassion for myself, a lot more love and understanding for myself. That that energy was just something that wanted to be expressed from a trauma or a wound. So it creates this acceptance of self because you realize that that's not really who you are that it's just something that wants to be healed. And that's really the key right there, the beauty of this whole dialogue. Because then as you start to experience that vulnerable expression and political correctness expression and speaking your mind expression, and you get to see all these differences, you know that you notice that none of that is who you are. None of that is who you are. And then as you start to clear all of that out and see it for exactly what it is, that you've taken it on, that it's been given to you, that you've been taught it, that it's from the past, you start to really connect to this authentic expression. It feels so good. It feels like you're hugging yourself. It feels like the version of you that you have been looking for your entire life 
is all of a sudden here. And in your vibration of that, you get to step more and more into that. You get to realize that you, the authentic self, more and more. And then, like I said, as you really tap into that authentic self and the authentic expression, it becomes difficult to not authentically express. It feels really wrong. I always use the terminology that it feels like sandpaper against my face. <laughs> like somebody's like rubbing sandpaper against my face. I don't know why I say that. Just feels like uh, rough and like, ah, uh, I don't, I don't want to do that. That doesn't feel good. So I won't. But I won't say that I always do that. At first it was like, ah, oh, that doesn't feel good, but I'm obligated to do this, to express in this way, whether it was going to do something, right? Because again, expression's not just verbal. I wanna keep reminding in the space. So it might be going to do something that you just don't really care to do. That's your expression as well. Okay, so I think you kind of got the idea now about what isn't authentic expression and what is authentic expression. So now how do we do this, right? How do we, how do we get more and more connected to our authentic expression? So always the first thing is through awareness. And I will say that social media is one of the best ways <laughs> that you can practice this because there's a lot of opportunity to express, right? And it is verbal, but that's okay. There's a lot of opportunity for it. It really creates an avenue for this, even though it's all verbal. Oh, but actually I'm being reminded right now that you can also do it through images, right? Or um, I always get this wrong. The memes, 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 I don't know what they're called. So that's another way of expressing on social media through pictures and images and those kinds of things. So there is another way, but this is a great avenue. It's a great tool in which to play with because also the thing about it is you get to take your time with it. When you're with a person and you're having a discussion or you're doing something together, right? Like let's say you go with a friend to have lunch the whole time you're expressing yourself, but you're kind of like in the moment with another person. So it's much harder sometimes to fully be aware of where you're coming from in every moment, but you most definitely can. So don't slide that under the rug. That's a very, very valuable time to do it as well. Or even just moments when you're with your friend, maybe not the entire time, but social media is really, really handy. So, Either way, the first thing is always awareness. So whenever you want to, and again, we're gonna kind of use an expression of you know, putting something out there or doing something. This comes and this arises and you want to either say something or put something out there or potentially do something. You can stop and whatever you're wanting to do or express, Take a moment to be aware. So take a moment first, always the space of awareness. <sighs> it's just to take a breath or two or three or four or five, however many it takes for you. <sighs> and just kind of come back to yourself, to your body, to this moment right now. And that helps to ground and center you. And then you want to step into the observer witness mode where you begin to become aware that you are aware, that you're aware that you are sitting here, aware that you are looking, aware of your reality, aware of everything. Right now in this very moment, you are aware of my voice. So awareness right then and there. Bam, you got it. So through that state of awareness, you can ask, not necessarily verbally, but just kind of 
where am I coming from? Why do I want to express in this manner? Where is this coming from? And you can feel into and notice if it's coming from the mind, maybe a belief or a perspective that you really want somebody to listen to, or a belief that like for action, that you have to go do this with this person because otherwise they're not gonna like you. Or are you coming from a trigger? A feeling, an emotion, a sensation has been triggered in you that makes you want to express in this particular way. So it's just a matter of practicing awareness within yourself, practicing the observer witness mode of being able to see and ask yourself, oh, interesting, I want to express this. Where is that really coming from? If you do this enough, you'll get really, really tuned into yourself. The first few times it may be a little bit you know, like anything, riding a bicycle, you fall down a couple times, right? Juggling, well, I still can't juggle, so <laughs> I never achieved that. <laughs> but anything, right? It takes a little bit of time. So don't give up just because the first time you don't get the super crystal clear answer. You have to observe yourself. And the more you observe yourself, the more you'll start to see your patterns and your beliefs and your structures and all the places that you come from personally. So it gets much faster. The awareness mode gets faster and then immediately, oh yeah, I know exactly why I want to do this exact thing in this moment. And so then you get to really start to see. And then you don't even have to go into awareness mode after you've done this for a while. You'll just immediately, as soon as something arises that you wish to express, again, we're always expressing through our vibration but I'm using particular circumstances because that's the easiest one to tune into. You'll just immediately know where that's coming from. And so you get to choose because it's always your choice. You have free will. Do you want to go ahead and express even though it's coming from whatever it's coming from? Or do you want to shift it into something else? That's totally your choice. But the awareness of it can be really fun. Now, because I brought in vibration, I wanna take it a tiny step further. You can always ask, what am I vibrating at right now? Where am I right now? What, it, what am I expressing through my energy? This takes a little bit more of a subtle awareness. So if you can already do this, fantastic. I really recommend you focus a lot in that space more than on the external expression of it, the doing or the speaking. Really tune more into the energy of it because there's a lot more information there. If you haven't done it yet, then you can definitely practice. Just same thing, feeling into the energy. Allowing, not from the mind, because the mind will be like, this is what it is, and try to fill in all the gaps of your question mark. And that's what the mind does. It wants to answer questions. And just let the mind come in first and try to answer. And you just keep breathing and allowing, breathing and allowing, and start to see if you can feel what are you vibrating at. You may or may not be able to describe it. It may be very obvious that you, you're vibrating at love or you're vibrating at joy or you're vibrating at, oh, there's a little bit of resentment there. Oh, that's really interesting. I was just about to express from resentment. Wow, cool. So if you can really keep just tuning in and using your intention, because your intention is very powerful. I want to tune in to the subtle energies. What am I vibrating at? What am I vibrating at? What am I vibrating at? And again, just allowing the mind to try to fill it in push all those answers away, those initial responses and keep feeling. You'll know when you hit it because it goes bling. Oh yeah, that's it. 
Like if you were to connect to that resentment, it's going to, whoa, kind of like, woo, <laughs> you get an electrical shock. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that, that's resentment. Yep, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Grief and love, joy, it doesn't matter what you're connecting to, but you really connect to the vibration. Your awareness tunes in to that vibration. So it kind of lights it up a little bit. And that's going to be your most clearest, clearest information of where is your expression in this moment. And then through the process of beginning to know yourself, beginning to know when you're expressing in different ways through your mind, through what's politically correct or through your trauma, then it's kind of like knowing what is not your authentic expression and clarifying that specifically in the moment. So in the moment, if you are wanting to express from that resentment, you can take a moment to be with that resentment, be present with it, allow it its own expression, because it will, it will vibrate as you draw awareness to it, it'll vibrate more. And that resentment will get to express, even if it's not verbal, even if you're not actually saying anything that's resentful. Resentful, is that even a word? <laughs> I make up my own language. <laughs> it's still vibrating, so it's still expressing itself. And just allow it to express. And then you know what comes after that? Clarity. Clarity within your expression. After that, resentment goes, blah, 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 blah. there's going to be clarity there. And then when you tune into that, if that feels like home, if that feels like peace, if that feels like alignment, if it feels like you, then congratulations. You've started to tap into your authentic expression. And the more you tap into that and get familiar with that, the more and more that will come into your space. It's already here really, but the more and more you'll clarify all of those other expressions and not really fully allow them anymore. You're gonna allow them and through the allowing they clear out, but not allowing them where your whole focus and your whole intention is there. Imagine a world where we are connected to what the person is actually meaning, like through their energy, where they're coming from, rather than what comes out of their mouth. There's a lot of beauty there because a lot of times people are meaning really for the good. They really want to help. They really want to say the right thing. They really want to help other people. And then it just doesn't come out right. So imagine if we're really tuned into each other and we're all authentically expressing, we can feel that in the other person. And we're not so hanging on every single word, if it's correct or not correct, if it offends or not offends. This is the space we're moving into. And this is the opportunity you have to connect to your authentic expression. So just take a nice deep breath. Always there's a level of compassion and acceptance here. Know that all of those expressions are loved and accepted. That even now, if you have been realizing through this conversation that you've been expressing primarily from the mind and from trauma, just take a moment to be okay with that, to accept that. It's through acceptance of ourself, of all the silly things that we do, that we actually get to transcend these things. If we shame ourselves or guilt ourselves, or, ah, oh, okay, now I know what I have to do. And so I'm going to drive myself into the ground to make sure that I'm always authentically expressing. That's not going to benefit you. That's also from a distorted ego. So 
So just being okay with exactly where you are right now, fully accepting that. And you might notice that when you do this, when you just love who you are in the moment, <laughs> laugh at yourself, giggle, like, look what I just did. That was hilarious. <sighs> and just accept. Because now you see, now you're aware of it. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift. Just through that moment of acceptance, your heart opens. And you're in a more authentic space right then and there. Even if you're laughing at yourself. <laughs> Just by letting go of yourself needing to change, you already connect more to authenticity. So in every moment that you start to work with and see and observe this authentic exp this expression, first off, bring in acceptance and allowance for each and every moment. Ah, there I am. Expressing from the mind. <sighs> Take a moment to just accept and love that moment right then and there. You were just given a gift from yourself to yourself where you became aware that you were expressing from the mind. That's a beautiful thing. And as soon as you do that, boom, you connect to your authentic self. And you'll feel it because it's just, again, that anchoring, that grounding, that alignment. And then from there, you could actually authentically express. You already are through your vibration. It's beautiful. So I hope this has given you guys a little bit more perspective on authentic expression and given you some real tools to notice the other expressions and to get yourself closer and closer, more and more within your own authentic expression. And I promise you, as you do this, it feels so good. You're gonna love it. I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions where the client really sets an intention of what they're trying to achieve, what they wanna work on. The intention is the foundation of the session. And then we connect over Zoom. And the energy that I channel really tunes into the intention. It's always so much fun because I never know what's going to show up. It's all channeled energy. But it's always very, very perfect. It very detailed tunes into exactly what is not in alignment, the block, the belief, the karma, the lineage, whatever it is. And then the energy starts to unravel that within you. There's always massive expansion. I call myself a divine catalyst because I bring in the energy of a catalyst. So people can really kind of like catapult into a different version of them, but a more true, authentic version of them. So they're always extremely transformative. So you can definitely check out my website, www.shaktima.net to check out my sessions there. I'm also here every Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And next Thursday, I want to talk about the ego. Yay. I'm so excited because, again, this is something that I feel is really not fully understood. And I want to bring in some other avenues about the ego and why the ego is so important for us. And it's so important for our ascension. And so helping you guys learn to realize your ego see what I call the distorted ego so that you can align your ego and that you can really use the power of your ego to actualize, to manifest, to create your authentic expression into this reality. 
So that frequency that I was talking about that comes through and manifests into your reality through your ego. So I really wanna, I'm excited to bring that in. If you've heard a lot about ego death and you know how we blame everything on our ego, basically, I wanna throw in some different perspectives to that. So I definitely hope you guys uh, will join me. And sometimes on these um, sessions, I go into meditations and channelings. It just kind of depends on what's going on, but um, it's always a lot of fun. I really enjoy it and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in to Divine Transmissions. I'm Lisa Marie Shakti Ma, your host, and I truly hope to see you next Thursday.